Ah, uh, that's a great question, and one of the most common, really, for any graphics program. In PowerPoint 2007, you have a tool called the Set Transparent Color, which is sem essentially samples any solid color you select and then converts that color to full transparency. Let's go ahead and just take a look at how it works. So let me select the next slide. A couple images here, right? We have an image of a truck and then the background with the road. We have a street sign. Both the street sign and the truck, right, they have a solid colored white background. Very common with a lot of stock photography. Let's look at the tool in action and remove the background. So again, select the image, and then we go up here to Format Menu, and then come over here to Recolor. At the very bottom of the list is a tool called Set Transparent Color. You can see the cursor now changes, and that indicates that we're ready to go ahead and sample that color. Click once on the white background, and look at that. Right? So there's our truck, transparency and all. Let's go ahead and apply it to the sign real quick. Select the sign, Format Menu, and then Recolor. Set transparent color, click again, and there you go. Isn't that great? Set transparent color is going to work best on any images with a solid colored background. If the image has a shadow or gradient or any kind of complex background, basically your results are going to be mixed or unpredictable at best. You know, there are workarounds, though, for parts of the image that may not be selected as well as others. So let's take a look at that. In the previous example, I showed you the truck, but watch this. If I move this truck up just a little bit, check that out. Really, it didn't do a very good job around the shadow. But for this effect, it works great. Why? Because my transparent selection up top is great. I can see the road behind me. And then the, uh, the white part around the shadow, well, that blends in with the background anyway. So if you're, if you're limited to PowerPoint and you only have that selection tool and part of your image works but the other part doesn't, you know, consider using that. Consider only putting half of the image over an object for that transparent effect and then blending the bottom part in with whatever solid color um, background that was already part of the image. Just another idea or, or possible workaround. Clip art. If you're working with clip art or vector images such as Microsoft's Metafiles, you can't apply the set color, but you have something even better, right? I mean, if I come down here, and this is a... Uh, just a vector object from the library. This doesn't need to have a set color to remove this tan background because I can already select the actual background and get a perfect selection, right? So just click, right click on it and then choose group, ungroup. You might get a warning that says it's a picture and not a group. Do you want to convert it? Sure, I do. And now, uh, let me ungroup it one more time. Right click on it, group, and then ungroup. But check that out. I can now select this background. Let me move that over. There we go. And I can delete that. So that's even a better way to do it if you have that option with a clip art. So set transparent color is only going to work on bitmap images. If you have a vector object, you can always get to the background that way. So that's that's your ideal, but if you're working with a raster or bitmap type image, you know, the set transparent color is going to be a better option. So you can always reset your image. So say, for example, you, you didn't like the way the, uh, the transparency works, or maybe you're changing a design direction and you want to go back to the solid colored background and maybe just add a frame to it or something. Easy enough. Select your image, go back up to the format menu like you did, but this time just select Reset Picture, and it'll reset the, uh, the picture the way it was when you first brought it in. Nice little time-saving tip. You don't have to go back and re-import the image. What you need and what you have is already in your slide. Now that's pretty much it. Just keep in mind that this is an all, pretty much an all or nothing tool without the option for any kind of fine tuning, but it's always worth trying before seeking a, you know, an outside a graphics program. If you've ever worked with a magic wand tool, say in Fireworks or Photoshop, you probably understand why it's sometimes referred to as the tragic wand tool, and that's because it's basically not the most elegant or predictable tool. PowerPoint set transparent tool is basically the same thing. It's going to work perfectly on some images and others it won't work so great. But it's always worth trying just before you move on or export your image to a more advanced graphics program.